mentions, we have eGL support. Um, and especially the GLX stuff and, and GL extensions are very difficult to reconcile with the, the composition, the external um, compositing manager. Because you end up having to add external uh, protocols between your applications and the compositing manager, and then the compositing manager is also talking about the X server, and so it just becomes uh, very difficult to manage all of the compatibility and, and changes required. So typically in a mobile in mobile cases where people are shipping X, like Nokia and I think Samsung too, um, they've in invented custom protocols for managing this and making sure that innovations occur smoothly in the face of an uh, external compositing manager. Wayland just kind of rolls all that in, into one and makes, makes the, the whole process a lot simpler, and I think builds upon the sorts of ideas that are in those, those external uh, projects. <coughs> so today, um, Weston, Weston actually works pretty well. You can run apps on it. Um, people are using it in, in various products. Uh, there's some TVs shipping with it. Uh, so depending on what you're doing, it may be enough for, for your needs. Um, QT was the first thing we did. We, we originally targeted Weston for um, Migo and some tablet devices. And so there was a whole tablet UI built around QT, QML, running on Weston, and um, it actually ran really nicely. So the QT support is probably the most mature. I think QT5 includes everything that's been ported over to their new Lighthouse QPA um, interfaces, and uh, Wayland is part of that. So that, that works pretty nicely. And then, of course, GPK, um, BFL, and other, other libraries have support. EGL is another one that's kind of a, a low-level API, but, uh, but that you can, you can talk EGL to Wayland. You still have to allocate your buffers somehow, so we have some kind of custom interfaces for that called G, GBM. Um, GTK is actually really nice. Uh, so in GTK 3, um, the GTK guys introduced runtime switching of your backend, so you can run uh, the same binary with an X11 backend or a Wayland backend. And for a lot of binaries, that just works. So you can you know, run a whole bunch of the GTK apps on Weston today, uh, and they work. That said, there are a couple of missing features. Um, we have drag and drop support is the protocol is defined, and that works in Qt, I believe, but not in GTK. Uh, and the client side decoration code is still under development uh, because we don't have an external process like a window manager decorating all of your windows. That's, that's done by the clients. Um, uh, Wayland.freedesktop.org is updated regularly with the status of all these toolkits, but it's, pretty, it's been pretty fun to watch. And in fact, I think our progress has been way faster than we thought it was going to be, and I think that's a testament to just how much simpler the environment is and, and, uh, and the kind of design decisions we made. So this is kind of the Mickey Mouse version of the, of the Wayland native application stack using GL and Qt as examples. So as I was saying, the the, the main way that we pass buffers to Weston is through buffer handles. Um, so we don't have to copy data around. And this lets Weston just bind those into GL textures and use that as source data for, for uh, composing the final scene. And you can see, in this case, I've got um, libgl and libegl linked into a GL application. With libegl, like I said, you've got to allocate some buffers and bind them into the GL layer somehow. That's kind of a, a limitation or design decision of EGL. But that's, that's doable. Once you do that, you can start generating frames and sending them over to, to Weston using just EGL swap buffers. So are the, for EGL, are the, are the native handles, is there stuff built into the protocol for, for those, or are they just dummy IDs, or just, are they real? They're real at this point. So we've actually gone through a couple of iterations there. Uh, it used to be that you would allocate a GBM buffer um, and bind it to an FBO and render the FBO, and you wouldn't use swap buffers, and then you pass that handle over the wire to Weston. So Weston can understand um, there's a, a separate protocol called DRM protocol. So the backend libraries that talk with Weston that use DRM as their rendering interface will send DRM um, gem handles across. But if you have, say, a PVR driver, you'd have a Lumi GL that was passing some other interface underneath, or some other handle underneath that corresponded to that buffer. So it's up to your EGL implementation to take your native type and make it into something that you can pass <coughs> to the server. Um, but we've also changed the implementation recently to uh, provide full EGL services rather than the kind of FBO hack, which has had its pluses and minuses. But so now you can just do EGL swap buffers and Weston gets the notification of it. 
And then on the QT side, it's the same thing. So on, on QT, you could use the, the GLESS backend of QT, and then you end up going through uh, Genome and, and EGL <coughs> the same way. Or you could use the software backend, um, and you'll be passing the handles using a file descriptor instead, so just a, a SHM handle. Um, and today, I mean, most of our development is done on upstream kernel drivers. So we just rely on the standard FDEV interface. So if you have an input device and it, and it provides an FDEV stream, you're done. The question supports it. Um, and it, it gets tested most on KMS, the KMS interfaces, but there are, there's an OpenWF backend as well for Weston. So you can run that on, on uh, you can run on OpenWF. And then there's an X backend and there's a Wayland backend. So you can run Wayland under Wayland, Wayland under X under So once Wayland gets all these frames, or once Weston, the Western compositor gets all these frames, it'll compose a final scene. And when it composes the scene, then it'll send back events to all the clients saying, okay, your buffer has been used, you can go compose another, uh, draw another frame now. Um, so I think the good environments have that support. Android, I think, is only just adding it in the J released to be able to, to do uh, decent animation support. But I think Wayland has it right here. Um, as I was saying, for GTK and QT apps, uh, a lot of times you, you don't even need to recompile. Um, with the new QT5 and new GTK stuff, you, don't, you can just specify a different backend to use. And as long as your application isn't using X specific calls, you're good to go. Um, we actually ported, so we, on Migo we had a huge um, code base of QT apps and framework and everything. And when, once Christian and I got the basics of QT working, we were able to just recompile that whole stack and change a few lines here and there where an X dependency had crept in. But beyond that, it was it just worked, which is really cool. And as I said, if you've got low-level GL apps, you'll need to deal with the EGL native window system types, but beyond that, it's pretty easy. This, I think, is what Keith already covered um, in more detail than, than I have here. But basically, you can run an X server under, under Weston and, and have it um, just be a regular X server drawing bits on your screen. Um, but again, it's just passing buffer handles around, so we're not just copying data you know, gratuitously. Um, but then in that case, the X server is generating final frames based on everything it's doing with the apps, and, and, uh, and Weston's taking care of things. And there are different, different methods available, so we have like some custom X drivers that can still use the Intel acceleration, or you could use a, a donor X server, you could use a rootless X server, um, I think the window management stuff is still under discussion, you can build it into the server or not, but um, that's possible and that's, that's doable today. So there are a few questions that keep coming up uh, on the IRC channel and mailing lists and things. So one of the, one of the big ones is, who are these people, don't these, don't these people know X? Like, why, why, why are they reinventing the world, right? So uh, the answer to that is that the people working on this are people who have been working on X for the past, you know, five to years. years. <laughs> In Keith's case, 25 years. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, these people know X, and they know how uh, X's strength, strengths and weaknesses and, um, you know, aren't just reinventing things for the sake of it. So for the things we want to do here, the X is just by design, you know, a, a lot of the things in X uh, just get in the way by design because it wasn't made for the sorts of environments we want to create today. Um, the platform requirements is a good one to touch on. So, as I was saying, there's a the kind of fundamental requirement here is that you be able to share buffers. So you can render to buffers, and as long as you can get a handle to that buffer and pass it to another process and have that process imported, you're pretty much good to go. Um, the, the details are something that different driver stacks tend to do differently. So, for example, they all have different display management APIs. They all have different execution APIs. But fundamentally, um, they usually have the same functionality. So as long as you can pass buffers around, you're usually in pretty good shape. And as I said, there's VRM support today, and there's OpenWF support today. And actually, someone has it working on PVR, but I think that's with, with, some, with some DRM support. Um, although I think there was someone outside that had it working without that too, one of the Nokia pads. Um, but it, the, the 
Western code base is very small and easy to work with. The back ends are even smaller, so it's pretty easy to port to, to different um, display environments if you need to do that, different graphics uh, APIs. In fact, within Intel, we have a TV-specific API um, that people have ported into, and that's kind of like DRM. It just has a different set of calls, so it's pretty easy to port to that. Another big question is the input and multi-touch. And I don't know, this one keeps coming up for some reason. People, for some reason, think, oh, Wayland doesn't do input. But that actually does input just fine. It has, has touch support and everything. So um, there are a few things that we want to add, like support for kind of more complex input devices, like Wacom tablets. But you know, that's, kind of a, that's kind of done as a sideband thing on X today anyway. So that's, if we get that right, I think we'll be, we'll be ahead of the game. But all the stuff that you want to do is supported today. And then network transparency. Uh, Christian had a really cool, cool slide with a good name on, on it for this one. But yeah, network transparency is, is not uh, part of Wayland today, but it's also trivial to add in a, in a pretty efficient way. So, as I was saying, on this this machine, I had been hacking on some some remote uh, remoting support using Libvian C server, and it's like a dozen lines <laughs> to add to Wayland, and, I've got, and I can connect to it with a VNC server and get a window. So it's, it's really easy to do. And the nice thing is, with, with Weston, we can just build it right into the compositor and do a very efficient update mechanism. We can send uh, connected clients lossy frames, even if we want to, and just update the region rather than, rather than the whole images we have or having to use uh, some custom protocol that connects. Um, so anyway, I expect that to be, I expect, expect to be able to push that upstream pretty soon. Uh, this is the schedule we've been kind of roughly going to so far. Uh, the, the 85 release we put out at, uh, at FOSDEM, so that's out there today. That's, uh, if you want to go play with something, you can build that today pretty easily. And, um, well, be careful if you use master or everything, but it's pretty easy if you use the release versions of things. Um, point 90 should be coming out. Actually, I think we already passed the point 90 milestone and decided we weren't going to do the release, but. Christian may have tagged it, um, but we're going to be doing some release candidates soon. And 1.0 should be, I think, the probably in the summer, and that'll be a stable protocol, stable API, um, relatively stable internal. So if you're developing an animation framework or something that you a plug-in internal to the compositor, um, that's going to continue to work. So that's that should be the summer, and that should also have uh, some pretty complete toolkit support, so you can do some maps. What's the realistic expectation around Weston when it comes to stuff like distro integration? Is, is, it, the, is it a sample implementation, or is, is it what, what the project realistically expects people will go out with? Yeah, so the probably our biggest customer, uh, immediate customer, is, uh, is Tizen in vehicle infotainment, which is a pretty specific um, vertical. Uh, so we'll be doing all the integration, and we have uh, reference user experience for that for that vertical uh, that we're developing internally. So we'll take care of the packaging for that. But if a distro wanted to ship this, yeah, it'd be non-trivial because they would have to be they'd have to build all their applications with with support for Weston and basically define a new UX for it. Um, so I wouldn't expect the distro to just take this, roll it up, and throw it out. You know. Once we have 1.0 out, um, I think it'll be a pretty short shot to getting something like GNOME 3 running on top of it with the full GNOME environment. In fact, we have a team that's doing a kind of a, a prototype uh, research compositor um, based on Mutter, which is the same window manager used by GNOME. And so what they've done is rather than building a new compositor and then you know, porting the GNOME stuff to it. They've just said, we'll take Mutter, we'll add Weston, or Wayland Protocol support to it, and, uh, and run apps that way. And they actually have GNOME 3 shell running on that today. So that would be the, the route I would expect a distro to take, you know, wait until there's a compositor available that can run a full GNOME shell environment, and then, and then just ship something like GNOME shell on top, or port Unity, and work. Said he was going to do that, I still have to see, you know, his people contributing. <laughs> Sure, I guess I was, especially something Keith said earlier, I was wondering whether most window managers would suit themselves to that, so that's one of the reasons I'm curious. 
Yeah, and, and so there are actually a couple schools of thought here. Keith is um, really worried about fragmentation, uh, but um, I think I agree with Christian that, that uh, Weston is really more like a window manager than, a, than an X server. And so we expect there to be quite a few of them. In fact, there's probably half a dozen or more out there today. The QT guys have written like five Wayland-based compositors already. The Mutter guys are showing that they, it's pretty easy to add it to um, an existing window manager. So I don't know that we're going to be able to stop that. And, um, and that may be how it gets into distros and into existing desktop environments. Any other questions? Thanks.